Hi everyone, what's up? Josh, we're here from Alternative Brewing. And today, we're here to check out the much anticipated Eureka Mignon Single Dosing Grinder. Now this falls under Eureka's latest generation of grinders, distinguished with the Oro badge. And Eureka have designed this grinder to stand out amongst the growing list of single dosing grinders on the market right now, throwing at it a full list of features. One in particular being the ELR, or extremely low retention. And this is why we're all here, let's be honest, and the fact that it is a flat burr grinder. But it's not like we haven't already seen similar looking single dosing grinders becoming popular, like the one over my shoulder, but I am excited about this grinder in particular, as it is Eureka Grinder. And these are hand assembled in Italy, and they have a great reputation. And there is a large range of their grinders, what are some of the best value for the home barista. Now, if you're with me in checking out just how good this grinder really is, then go ahead and smash that like button. And you can expect more videos that you wanna see. And by hitting the subscribe button, you can follow us along on the journey. So with that out of the way, let's jump in and check out the Eureka Single Doser. So starting out at the best part, the retention of this grinder. When testing the Eureka 4 retention, at 20 doses of 18 grams of espresso grind, it produced the results expected of 0.2 grams or under per dose. But it was significantly better when employing the bellows system than before it or not at all. This bellows is optional to use, and as this is a single dosing grinder, let's call that SDG for short there, the hopper isn't much good for more than 50 grams of beans, and you have a few options with the Eureka's hopper assembly. There is the clear lid, and then also a matching oak wood single dose lid. These admittedly are a little bit tight to get on and off the hopper, but then if you add the bellows or the Eureka blow up feature to the hopper and then the lid, then you have no issues either of them sitting. And by using the bellows, you minimize the retention greatly in the grinder. So I can't really see why you wouldn't have that on all the time. And it would be a good thing if Eureka made these available to purchase separately, as they are the most worked part of this grinder, and it will probably be the first thing to go. Now a recommendation when single dosing with the Eureka is that you keep the hopper gate shut until you add your beans into the hopper, then have the grinder turned on and the motor spinning before you open that gate and let the beans drop into the moving burrs. And this is not an uncommon practice with many single dosing grinders. And other than the bellows system, the Eureka grinder achieves very low retention in a couple of other ways like the unmistakable 15 degree lean that the whole grinder is designed on. And this means when you add your beans into the hopper, well, they're pretty well on a natural trajectory through the burrs and out the grind chute into your grinds cup. And then there's the burr chamber itself, made really compact. It's basically all burrs with some tiny sweepers. And these direct the flow of grinds produced out of the chute and they're pushed all the way to the edge of the burr chamber to ensure that they pick up every last bit of grounds and then send it out of the chute efficiently. Now, if all of this isn't enough to evacuate all the grounds from the chamber, which is true in most cases, then the included blow up system up top of the hopper with a few pumps as the last beans head through the burrs and then also at the end, help clear out any grinds that do get caught within the chamber or coming out the chute. You also have a clump crusher at the start of the grind chute to help make sure grinds are nice and fluffy into the dosing cup. Though you could go a step further and include the RTD method of a little bit of water to the beans prior to grinding them. I did notice dust does start to build up around the chute after a few presses of the bellows. Though static wasn't an issue, the RTD method may assist you if you have any ongoing issues with cleanliness. Now, checking out the burrs on the Eureka Oro SDG, these are a huge 65 millimeter flat bird that Eureka have manufactured and patented as their own diamond burrs that in their own words, keeps the granulometry constant longer than any other specialized burr treatment does. And this basically means that they're really tough, durable burrs that are gonna remain sharper and provide a consistent performance for a very long time. Now it's estimated at least 1000 kilograms of beans, which is a ton of morning coffees but you do need to consider replacing the burrs after that. They've also mentioned that these burrs are a multi-purpose burr set designed for both espresso and manual brewing. 
Now it's always a big task to accomplish an all-purpose grinder. And there always seems to be, for the most part from my experience, something not quite to spec for either the filter grinding or the espresso aspect. And a large part of that, I guess, is the flat burr versus the conical burr dilemma. For filter grinding though, it's fairly unanimous that flat burrs are preferred for more uniformity in the grinds, and then this produces a cleaner and more transparent flavor in the cup. As the Hario V60s I did brew with the Eureka SDG were some of the nicest I've had using a home grinder, clean and juicy coffees with no issue of finding the right grind setting, often a little bit finer than normal. But the flavor profile that is that is not always easily carried over to brewing an espresso, especially if you are more inclined to be brewing darker, richer and more bold flavors within your coffee. Often this is associated with Italian or darker roasts. And if you're into drinking that style of coffee, then perhaps a conical burr grinder would make much more sense. But for a medium and certainly lighter roasted coffees, or say if you're chasing those more transparent, juicier, more vibrant and cleaner flavors within your espresso, then the Eureka SDG is that strong contender for unlocking the flavors you're after. And to take a look at the grinding performance of the Eureka SDG, starting out with Turkish coffee through to your espresso grinding range, and then a fair bit coarser you get to your mocha pot brewing, with a jump up to AeroPress. And that's followed closely by V60 and other manual pour overs as you can grind that little bit finer and still get a great extraction. Next to that is automatic drip machines. And then to French press and at the coarsest end of the spectrum, cold brewing. Now the grind adjustment wheel is found on top of the grinder with the mechanism internal to avoid it getting clogged up with grounds. This is a larger wheel than those found on the regular Mignon range, and this offers for more precise, smaller adjustments to be made easier. And this is a stepless grinder, where you have your espresso range anywhere from say two and a half to five. And for references, I was brewing a Kenyan espresso on this this morning, and it was dialed spot on to four. But if I took that a quarter more fine on the grind dial, then it slowed the shot down by seven seconds. And if I took it a quarter more coarse on the dial, then it sped the shot up by five seconds. And for all your filter grinding needs, then the range is between 15 to 30 or three full turns of the grind dial. Now I haven't found any issues turning the knob and it kept quite a consistent tension on it as far as five full turns, which is more than you need for grinding for all brewing methods. Now the grinding speeds of the Eureka SDG are reasonably fast for a home grinder of upwards of two and a half grams a second for fine espresso grinds and anywhere up to three and a half for filter grinding. These speeds are a combination of the burrs and the engine, which Eureka have opted to use an AC motor in the SDG as opposed to a DC motor. And the biggest benefits you're gonna get from an AC motor is there's a good amount of torque being generated between the burrs. And this correlates to the fast grind times with 1650 RPMs and a large 320 watt power output. And this makes a lot of sense when using flat burrs within a grinder that need to spin at higher RPMs than conical burrs do. And being a single dosing grinder that has short, sharp grinding bursts, an AC motor is brilliant at managing those high speeds with variable torque. There is a downside to this AC motor though, and that is there is a lot of heat generated when grinding. And the Eureka SDG does not have an inbuilt fan within the motor. So Eureka suggests not grinding any more than 160 grams at a time, and this almost rules out cold brew grinding altogether. On the other hand, whilst it only took me 25 18 gram doses back to back before the grinder shut off due to overheating and then 10 minutes for it to recover, if you are making 25 coffees back to back, this is absolutely not the grinder for you anyway. Now, when it comes to the noise produced, Eureka added their popular anti-vibration sound dampening to the body of the SDG, and it keeps the noise down well below 70 decibels. It's extremely quiet on idle, and a little less quiet when grinding espresso versus that of grinding coarser coffee. And the upside to all of this is that it is fast enough and quiet enough to reduce the overall noise impact to be as effective as Eureka's most quiet grinder, the Mignon Silenzio. Now the last few things to talk about with the Eureka SDG to operate the grinder, it's a simple on and off switch at the side of the grinder. This is a little bit stiff, 
but I guess at least you can't accidentally knock it on or off. And then you grind into the stainless steel 54 millimeter dosing cup. Now this dosing cup has nice smooth edges to it, free of any ridges on the inside, and it fits neatly onto a 58 millimeter portafilter with no issues, and it makes for clean grinds transfer, but it only holds a maximum of 45 grams. And lastly, I just want to acknowledge how much of a good looking grinder this really is. And I know that's totally subjective there, but I think the Eureka STG has some serious class to it and it's really well balanced. You have the boxy look, but the roundness of the hopper, the stainless steel keep cup, but the wood finishes and the white version. That's right, there are more colors to choose from, not just the black. That sports the silver trimming, which I really like as well. And the other thing I just love about single dosing grinders in general is that they're totally uncomplicated. The beans that you need right now go in and then they come out ground fresh. And I know every other grinder does that, but it's quick, there's no retention, and then it's super easy to dial in an espresso to an ideal recipe as you're not having to then purge the grinder of any grind changes. And tracking your grind settings then is absolutely straightforward as well. And for using it as an espresso grinder at home, this makes a lot of sense to single dose your beans and it's gonna save a lot of waste. And for filter coffee enthusiasts, well, we've been doing that for years. Now to carry out the speedy maintenance of the Eureka Oro SDG, first turn the grinder off and unplug it from its long cord. And then you simply need to remove the hopper and then undo the one screw from the back holding the top plate down. To gain full access to the burr chamber, there are two more screws to remove and then a further three screws for each burr set. Then what you wanna do is brush these burrs down as well as remove any grinds from the grind chamber and the chute. This is possible retention, but it's more likely oils that have built up over time. And these oils, in a way, will create their own retention. Then all you need to do once it's all clean is place it all back together in reverse, and then you're done taking care of this beautiful grinder. And that's the Eureka Oro Mignon single dosing grinder for you. This is a grinder that's gonna sit at the top of a lot of people's wish lists and for good reasons. The grinder, it looks superb and it has those features like almost zero retention, the quiet grinding and the super durable 65 millimeter fat burrs along with this bellows. It's a coffee lover's dream. And how it stacks up against other SDGs, especially for its flavor profile, I'm gonna save that for another video, so stay tuned for that one. And if you have any questions on this grinder, add them to the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one.